And I think in messaging, one thing I was talking to in my community recently was about everyone wants something, right? Like we're a, a, a wanting society. Every, I want yeah. that. I want that. I mean, I remember when I was little and I used to circle the big like Sears catalogs for Christmas. <laughs> I want this. I want this. Like, right. You want everything. Right. Free, free Amazon wish list. <laughs> I an Amazon wish list. That's hilarious. I have never presented that to my kids. I will remember not to. <laughs> but realizing that, like, we all want all of these things, but what do we actually need? And I think great messaging and great products or great services are when we present the want, they come in for the want, and then they find out that what they needed, which they didn't really put a finger to, is now being given. That's the raving fan where they're like, yeah. I didn't even recognize that this is what I was going to be getting. It was so much more valuable than any dollar I could have spent, any time I could have invested, any resource that they would have exchanged. And that's that becoming piece, right? That's that, Absolutely. you know, who am I becoming in the process of getting what you're selling? Um yeah. Let me share just a little piece around that. So Please. one of the very first things that really started my career, um, I'd left Microsoft. I, I was in that like, this isn't it anymore. I don't know what it is. I went on a date, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and learned about coaching. And I was like, oh, that's it. So I got trained in coaching. Uh, <laughs> and then it was crickets when I hung my shingle, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, everybody said, you know, you got to have a niche, but none of what people were saying made sense to me. Cause it was like, pick one, or here's a lucrative niche or, yep. you know, um, I got trained with a mentor of mine around life purpose work. And then I built a company with a platform builder. She was one of the big online, you know, what are you known for? Who knows you platform? Um, it was working with her that I really got my trailblazing first body of work, which was seeing how people's core wounds are part of the training program for their life purpose. Oh, really? And that when we understand what the training program is, we can also decode who needs it, why they need it from you, why you are the one to deliver it, and then how to package it so they recognize it, right? So, uh, in terms of like, hey, what do they want and what do they need? What they wanted was, I want to know who my market is and I want to connect more directly with them. What they needed was actually to take their own place and authority and being a leader for that audience. They so didn't good. know that was what was going on, right? Okay. So I'll give you an example of this. I worked with a guy who uh, was a consultant in Silicon Valley, but he wasn't really positioned. He was well-respected. So we got a lot of inbound leads, but he couldn't do outbound marketing. So we do this process. And I start with this two-hour intake of people's life history. And I ask them these questions. What happened to you around their, their wound memories? Sure. Uh, how did you feel? What did you crave? Mm -hmm. What did you do? What skills did you develop? And what beliefs did you adopt? Six questions. Each one has a marketing application. So what happened is part of brand story. Uh, how did you feel? That's the ouch. That's the away from motivators your tribe shares with you. What did you crave? That's the longing your people share with you, right? What did you do? Tells me what unique skills you developed that your market can count on you for. And what beliefs did you adopt? Tells me about the shared psychology your audience has with you that creates their known problems that you can market to so long as it's a problem they're aware of, have pain around, and are willing to spend money uh, to address. Brilliant. So uh, nobody had ever, that I know of, <laughs> said, oh, core wounds and marketing. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Peanut butter and, you know, chocolate. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> here's an example of it. Um, this guy came to me. We did the process. He was given up for adoption. Wife left him for his business partner. It was betrayal, 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 betrayal. It's like, well, that's the pattern. I'm looking for patterns, not specifics, because it's the pattern that you share with your audience. That's a landscape you know in and out, that when somebody else is in that landscape, you know exactly how to serve them. <laughs> a little difficult, you know, in your own stuff. Completely. Uh, because completely. we can't see the forest or the trees all the time, yeah. right? But um, he looked at me like I had three heads, uh, and he's like, you're telling me I'm going to talk about betrayal to CEOs in Silicon Valley? I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not going to market the pattern. You're going to market the symptom of the pattern. Ooh. 
So we just follow the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Okay. If you have betrayal, you don't trust people. And if you're a CEO, where is that going to cost you? Oh, when you don't trust your executive team. Ah, and what happens then? Well, then you become a bottleneck. Ah, and if you're a bottleneck, then what? Well, then you slow down innovation and then you die or get sold. Right. We, I used to work at this startup in, uh, in Silicon Valley and we had a, a, the Barry effect. It was a brand inside our internal culture. Barry was the CEO. I was part of, right? <laughs> I love Barry. It. The Barry effect. Uh, I was part of this feature triage team, and uh, we would we would prioritize certain things to develop. They'd go all the way into beta development, and then he'd come in and like, eh, I don't like it. And just oh go, no, yeah, right. So I'm like, oh, I know this guy. I used to work for one. <laughs> Um, and sure enough, uh, the, the, the board ousted them, brought in somebody to position us for sale and we got sold fortunately. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I said, okay, so the real issue is an innovation issue because the CEO doesn't trust people because they share a betrayal pattern with you. Mm. So we position him as an innovation consultant for small so to mid size. Cool. Uh, companies in Silicon Valley. And now when he's interviewing potential clients, he he starts here. So tell me about your executive team. Do you trust him? Do you rely on him? Right? He interviews the executive team as well before he'll take on a gig because he knows what life is prepared for him. What God has prepared him to do is to help these leaders build trust because that's been his life's journey. That's the transformation that rides along with a transaction of uh, boosting innovation in these companies. There's no one else on the planet that right? does that thing for those people. And that's what I mean by having that one square inch you can drill a mile deep. He also now goes into the market with this deep confidence because he sees how his whole life prepared him to do this holy work. And that's, I that's I think that I've never seen it presented in this way or heard it presented this way. I love it on a million different levels. And I'm thinking through like um, the depth variation to what it is that I take clients through. And we've simply talked about it in the community as a pain and passion transformation zone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will come with a good idea, which is this idea of, you know, I'll use the real estate one. Um, and then they think this is it. This is my life's dream. This is my life's passion. This is what I want to do. And when we go into doing the journey mapping and dissecting of their past triumphs and tribulations, like I want the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. And they come in and like by session two, they're like weeping. Right. Yeah, they're like, right. This is not what I hired you for. <laughs> right. Like, this what is to be <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not a therapist. I promise you, I'm not a therapist. We're going to build a business. The first dream, it's going to come to fruition. But a good idea is the one thing that will eventually lose its shininess, right? It'll mm -hmm. eventually run dry. It'll eventually get sold. But the God idea is to be able to infuse every element of thyself because he's going to use everything for good. And I feel like when we can blend all of that together, that's where that confidence that you speak of to him, that's where that security and that authority come into play. And when you show up, and you're speaking through your lens of experience, no one can touch that no. because they can relate to it and they can connect with different realms, which is why you build missions and that's why communities are cultivated alongside you. But it's like this un unapologetic, this is who I am. It's an identity yeah. thing it's, rather than in a good idea. It's that, I would add this. Yeah. This is who I am connected to this is my relevance in this market yeah good right because there's a lot of people i know that have a this is who i am they yeah don't know when they go to market their confidence gets drained because they don't see the the connective mm -hmm. tissue between who they are and the needs in the market and the relevance they have in relationship to them it's, good. it's that connective tissue that helps them go not only is this who i am this is who i am in service to you 